Hello and welcome to another edition of Arts Review. Once again, I'm joined by Professor Hodge, art critique of the New York Times. Good to have you back again, Barty. An absolute pleasure, Mervyn. Today we are looking at the work of J.W. Pemberton, sculptor and ceramic artist. Firstly, perhaps his most famous collection, The Fat Bird with Big Jugs. And in this piece, Professor, you can see Pemberton's whole essence, as it were. You certainly can, Merlin, because it was no secret at the time that Pemberton was under huge pressures, and the pain that he went through coupled with the anguish of his incestuous love for his sister Fanny is clear for all to see here. Fanny was definitely the inspiration for this piece, and indeed most, if not all, of his subsequent work. What, when first viewing this piece, Professor, was your overriding emotions? Well, Monty, I don't know if lust is too strong a feeling to express in ceramic form, but I certainly get the sense that what Pemberton is trying to say here is for. The huge jugs are dominating the piece, bursting into the consciousness of the viewer, almost inviting you to suckle and gorge in a frenzy of fondling of those ample, curvaceous orbs. Yes, I am almost lactating myself. Pemberton has completely lost himself in the construction of this piece, and whilst you are virtually putting your head in between those jugs, you also know that driving the whole thing along is his complete infatuation with Fanny. Absolutely, Marlon. It's as if Pemberton cares so much about the proportions of the jugs, the fact that the bird itself is so fat is almost irrelevant. Yes, the loving attention he has clearly lavished on those sweet, almost pert jugs is undeniably a testament to the fact that he, whilst working on his piece, has Fanny on his mind. Oh, without a doubt, Miranda. And although Pemberton continued working for another 20 years after this collection, when he eventually died in 1894, he was, was of course, laid to rest after much legal jiggery-pokery beside his beloved Fanny. Thank you, Professor Hodge. J.W. Pemberton, unconventional in both his work and his affections, but truly a master in his field. Next week, we'll be looking at Philippe Duval and his particular view of life in the French Navy in the 18th century.